Hi. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I tuned the JMC servo motor. So to get started, there are several things that you need to do. One is you need to get the motor mounted. This is the x-axis that we're tuned today. The motor sits right there. The motor see, needs to see the load um, that it will experience in normal operation of the machine. And that is absolutely necessary to tune it. You cannot tune it laying on the table. Um, I also recommend that you hook up the alarm output, especially if you have an access with dual drives. If one drive doing the tuning um, will stop, and that might happen actually, is that we tune it and make an error and it will just stop. Um, the other axis would continue to drive because your board will not know that the motor stopped turning. So the alarm output hookup for a dual drive is a must have, otherwise you're going to break something on your machine. The next thing is to tune the motor. Of course, we need the software and you need to go to jmc-motor.com and download the software. It's currently version 1.76. That's what I have. Later on, you will see it. Um, next is we need an adapter cable. So that would be an RS-232 to USB. Most computers don't have an RS-232 anymore. So we need a USB to RS-232. RS-232 and that needs to be the one with a prolific chipset. If you have another cable that might not work and you cannot get any connection to your motor, they're just not talking, then it has the wrong chip in there. The wire is not expensive. Uh, it's about 10 bucks on Amazon. And next is we need a 232 to the JMC connector, which is right here. And there's three connections on here. There's an RX, a TX and a ground. I'll show you a picture of that and how to hook that up. And um, next is that once you get online, the very first thing to do is you want to save the file. And be careful with on the JMC software is relatively good explained, but normally in any PLC or any download, scenarios you're going to be used to downloading something from the internet so download needs onto your computer well that's the opposite when you work on a plc or on motor server systems often download is meaning to the motor and upload means to the computer so it's opposite and um, but nonetheless very first thing to do is save the file otherwise you're going to be scrunching around because you just override it with some stupid data. Now let's have a look at the computer and how the tuning goes. Okay, when you first open your JMC software, then you're going to see that you have here the connections and mine is COM3. You have to find out which one that USB port refers to which COM port and you can use the device manager for that. The baud rate I left as it is uh, and also the rest I left. Uh, integrated servo motor is what you need to choose and then you're going to turn that on. And next is that we are going to the parameters right here. Okay, the parameters are loaded <coughs> and we, we start out with P00. And here are the motor parameters themselves that uh, you want to maybe pause the video here and have a look. I'm not going to go and read through these, but this is how it should look like. Next tab is the P01 main control parameters. Okay, so P0101 control mode setting. And if you highlight it and then scroll down right here, you'll see that we have zero for position control mode, speed control mode, torque control mode. We need position control mode. So it needs to be set to zero. That's important. And the next one is our auto tuning and P0102, real time automatic adjustment. So we always want to run the auto tuning, no matter what, even if we do manual tuning, we want to run the auto tuning. And I explain to you later why that is, but parameter P0102 is a real time automatic adjustment and we need to set that. In the first go around, I want to show you something. So we're going to set that to two. When we set this value to two and we're going to update that motor parameter, we hit OK. It's highlighted now in red. The next parameter is P0103. Here we have the real time automatic adjustment 
and it's set to 13. So if I, this is basically the stiffness of the system. And I want to show you something said, if I walk over to the machine and I will go ahead and grab the axis and move it, it is very soft. So you can see here the clutch and it's moving and that is absolutely not usable. So what we need to do is increase its value. So we go from 13, maybe to 15. And we're going to update that value as well. So what happened at 15, we can see that we can move the axis still. The axis moves fine. And if I go ahead and I grab the shaft better, but you can see we still have a lot of movement. So, okay, our, object, our objective now is to get this value as high as possible without the axis locking up. And I believe mine was at 21. I did that already before. And if I hit this at 21, um, you'll see that if I now move the axis that it starts to have a slight squealing noise. Wow, 21 is still possible. Anyway, so you get the idea. We increase this value until the axis locks up. So now with the value of 21, I can barely move this by hand, but there is still movement. So pretty quick note, there is one parameter that is extremely important for any CNC machine. And that is the amount of tracking error that we have to a commanded position. And the software lets us measure that. And I'll show you next how I do that. If we go here to this button, then we have an oscilloscope. And there are several different values that we can show at the bottom here. And I've disabled from the last use, I've disabled, cha disabled channel two, three, and four. I've only channel one marked right here. And I have here the position follow error. And there are a bunch of selections that we can do, but the the main item, there's only one main item that we are after, and that is we want to get the positioning of the motor as accurate as possible. So I can click operate now, and you will see that we are moving here along the line. Now let me grab that axis one more time, and let's just move it by hand. So that was our positioning error, and we can change the resolution of that, of five. Our error right now, when I grabbed that axis, was five steps, or maybe here, maybe eight steps or so. Let's see if I can move it a bit more. Yeah, and this is what I mean. This tracking error right here is not acceptable. It's not acceptable for um, the tuning of our machine. Okay, so what can we do? Let's hit stop right here. We go back to our parameter list. And there's another parameter and you have to scroll down in the, in the beginning here for parameter 102, it says, you see that the range is zero and two. That's actually not quite right. Scroll all the way down. You're gonna find here that three automatically adjusts the rigidity, but then also you have parameter P0203, excuse me, P0203 and P0204 manually. And that is what we're gonna do. So let's see what happens if we set this to three. And we update. And we have to go now to parameter the speed forward gain and the speed forward smoothing constant. So the speed forward smoothing constant is a filter 
um, for the speed forward gain. That's parameter P0203, 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 there it is, speed forward gain. We can set it all the way from 0 to 100. So I'm 30 right now. Well, um, let's say we're going to set that to 50. I'm going to upload it. And at this point of time, we need something to quantify our changes. And we need to do it better than me just grabbing it by hand. So I will write a quick G-code program just to move the axis forward and backward. And then we can run the oscilloscope at the same time and see our following error. Start the axis running. And you could already hear a little bit of a squealing noise, or I could hear it. Um, start the oscilloscope again. And you see that we have right now a tracking error of about 50. And that is not acceptable. Okay. Now, the nice thing is that if we go back to... We're running at 2 meters per minute, 2,000 millimeters per minute. And if we go and change, make, make a change to a parameter right now, that parameter will actually take effect right away so I can have this running and the speed forward smoothing is at 0.5 let's get that actually a little bit up at 0.8 and I'm just doing that because I hear a squealing noise um, we update that parameter and let's get from the 50 let's say we're going to go to an 80 close to 100 parameter we update that parameter my loop has stopped let me restart the loop Okay, so we are now at 80 and 0.8 for the smoothing. And let's go what the oscilloscope says. Wow, pretty nice. Um, so we can change the resolution here, maybe to 30 or maybe to 20. Okay, so we have 20 steps plus and minus. Let's go back to the parameter. We are at 80, we have a little bit left to go right here. We can do that at 100 and download that parameter. And while we're running, that parameter is changing in our oscilloscope. Wow, big difference. So the 80 to 100, look what just happened. That is amazing. Um, let's go and make a resolution of five right here. Um, even better, let's make a resolution of two. Okay, so we have two steps, actually one step and sometimes two steps. Well, sometimes here, minus four. Um, okay, so that is at a certain acceleration, a certain speed. And if we go back now here, and we're gonna start the program one more time, we're at two meters per minute. Well, the question is, what is the speed that you normally would expect your machine to be running? Will you make a cut at three meters per minute, 3,000? Maybe um, in wood, I can see that. So here we still have an um, acceptable error of roughly one, one plus, plus one or plus two and minus two, somewhere in that area. Sometimes, you know, we, we see that the positioning is off a tiny bit, but um, I think this now is an acceptable result um, using the auto-tuning. Um, and that is something for you to decide if this is a good value or not. So the auto-tuning got us to an error of about plus minus two, the maximum maybe was like five that we've seen there, but what does it really mean in accuracy of our machine? Well, we can calculate that and therefore we need to know the pitch on the particular axis. In my case, it's really simple. I have a ball screw and the pitch is five millimeters. Now, if you have a belt drive or maybe a gear in between, what you need to know is that with one revolution of the motor or of the drive system that is attached to the motor, what is the transverse of the axis? So how many millimeters forward or backward does the axis go? 
and that would be in my case five millimeters and we have adjusted the motor to make 4,000 steps in one revolution. So five divided by 4,000, by 4, that is a bit over one thousandth of a millimeter, 0 0.00125. Now we multiply that by five, that would be the maximum that we have seen there, let's say, then we have about an error of six thousandths of a millimeter. So six thousandths of a millimeter for a woodworking machine, hey, Absolute okay, I think it's an acceptable value and the auto tuning in this case got us to an acceptable range. That means the axis is stiff enough. Now, if you plan on going faster, for instead of three meters per minute, maybe four or five, then that error, be aware, will be higher and the auto tuning might not get you where you need to go or want to be. If that's the case, then I will catch you in the next video where I will show you how to do the manual improvements of that auto-tuning. Till then.